Now it's time to assemble your very basic horizontal and vertical stabilizer with elevator with or without a rudder and apply your control horns and servos. Now the first consideration is how big do you make your horizontal and vertical stabilizers? Well a very rough rule of thumb for basic planes and trainers like this is that the horizontal stabilizer should have about a quarter to a third of the surface area of the wing which depending on the cord will result in a horizontal stabilizer that's about 40 to 50 percent of the span of your total wing. So this is a 30 inch wingspan and my horizontal stabilizer is just over 14 inches in span making it almost 50 percent span. And then your vertical stabilizer is typically 40 to 50 percent of the surface area of your horizontal stabilizer. So in this instance it's right about 7 inches for my vertical stabilizer. The control surfaces generally are about a quarter to a third of the total cord of your horizontal and vertical stabilizers. You can see this is about a third of the span is control surface and the rest will be stationary. Same with the vertical stabilizer depending on how aggressive you need your yaw control to be. I like about a quarter to a third of the cord is movable control surface. Now here's my horizontal stabilizer. I've used the wraparound technique for the leading edge, the kissing tape technique for the trailing edge, and applied hot glue along the edges just for expediency. And in applying the vertical stabilizer, there are two methods for ensuring that the elevator receives clearance from the vertical stabilizer. The first is to apply these flush in the front, but to cut a recess on the bottom of the rudder so that the elevator has room to move up and down. The second is to actually set the vertical stabilizer forward and up to allow the elevator to have good excursion up and down but to cut this notch in the rudder itself and the middle part of the vertical stabilizer so that it'll allow it to fit down flush in the front right here where my thumb is but still allow the elevator to move and the rudder to move. Now I'm keeping this model super simple so I'm just going to use the cutoff technique and glue the vertical stabilizer here in the center of my horizontal stabilizer which I've marked and I use hot glue right on top of this tape. Now my philosophy when assembling these simple foam planes is to have them strong enough to stay together in flight with hot glue but weak enough to pop apart in a crash so they can be reassembled rather than extensively repaired after a crash. And so in using the actual vertical stabilizer as a guide up against this line I'll just apply a generous bead of hot glue and then just flip that right up and hold it in place ensuring that the elevator is able to move up and down and the rudder is able to move back and forth. If you like you can actually add an extra little fillet of glue along the joint now my vertical stabilizer is securely affixed to the horizontal stabilizer and ready for the servos and the control horns as a quick aside hot glue is noticeably more brittle in cold environments so be cautious about that if you're flying in the snow but another useful adaptation of that principle is if you ever have a joint that you need to remove cleanly so you can use uh, dust off, turn the can upside down so it comes out liquid and spray it liberally onto that joint where the hot glue is, get it nice and frigid and it will become brit brittle so that you can typically just, just break it right apart.